Hey guys, what is up? Kid here of Burn One with the Shadowverse Evolve channel, joined as always with my bro. Hey, what's going on, guys? It's your co host, Dean. That's right, we're back once again, but this time, not for our normal podcast. We're doing another early prediction tier list. The Uma set just dropped. We don't really have decks like decided exactly what each craft is going to have, so instead, we're going to just kind of rate the crafts ourselves on where we think it's going to end up being. And so as you can see, we just have a couple tiers on there because I think we are kind of in agreement. Maybe Dean doesn't think this way, but I guess we'll find out as we talk more. Uh, I think this meta is a little bit more open. I think there's more like two tiers and then like the rogue tier of like there's potential there, but we're like unsure of how good it is. Um, anything you want to add before we jump right into this, Dean? No. I think you're about right. It's a very open meta. There's a lot of actual room. You know, Dragon and Uma both have had hits. So, you know, we're kind of uh, up in the air on what's actually going to be good. But should we start from the top then? Just start off at Forest? Yeah, sounds good. Uh, well, I'm, I'm interested where you think Forest is at. I kind of have an idea, but let me let me hear your thoughts. I... I uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm the Force Coper. Like I I want Force to be good. I hold it once and then I say never again. Uh, that's what happened last uh, format. Do I want to put in Rogue? We got bounce backs. We finally got bounce backs. You can play more than the six, right? Before you had Ancient Elf and you had Nature's Guidance. That was it. If you didn't open those, you didn't have a deck. Now we can play more bouncers. We can actually go into the combo strategy. The question is: Is the combo strategy even good enough? I know you've played it a bit. Is this I rogue? Have. Is this rogue? I think this is like high potential rogue. And like, if I was forced to throw it into a tier right now, I would definitely tier. It would probably be tier two uh, currently from my testing. Uh, but I mean, yeah. I think it has a lot of potential. I want to say it's more of a rogue deck, not because it's worse than tier two, but because I think the potential it has, if someone figures out the exact list that that it can pop off, because um, in my testing, you can consistently end the game between turn seven and eight, depending on how how the game rolls out. But uh, in that testing itself, I found that the deck had some very glaring weaknesses. For example, if like, say, for example, your opponent for the first like two to three turns, they don't really present anything threatening. Uh, Force has a really high chance of just winning the game and like just trading their life for, uh, you know, just for extra time, essentially. So you can get to turn seven and then pop off and win that way through the silver bolt burns and everything like that. Um, but the biggest issue I found was that against other very aggressive decks that go low to the ground and they're like already trying to push good damage and good numbers from turns one, two and three. Uh, Force then has to play this weird, almost control like game, and you don't get as often as like extra like one or two hits in because generally I think it's if you can get your opponent down to roughly like 14 life, uh, you can basically kill them by turn seven most games as long as you have uh, silver bolt in hand. Uh, it's it's that first few turns of the game is the rough part, and that I think that a lot of time decides how good Force is going to be that game because. I played a bunch of to Uma games where they stumbled in the beginning. I took for free and it wasn't even a game games where they were actually able to like do their normal stuff. Those games were like impossible for me to win almost. That's what I've felt so far. Yeah. So it sounds like basically figuring out the list that consistently can tackle uh, what needs to be tackled is really going to be the actual issue here then. Um. Because is there a force list that can tackle Uma consistently? There might be. Like I don't know. I I don't. I haven't like. I haven't played around. It's got a pretty. It's got a lot of cards, uh, that you know myself or you may have not have been sleeving, and uh, maybe somebody out there will, and they'll find the list, and it'll be consistently good. It'll be able to deal with boards, and then like combo in the like, maybe some of the later turns. Like I I I think that's probably more of where I would try to go with force is a more like combo in the later turns hard control in the beginning with the combo pieces uh but ultimately i'm not even sure like how consistent that is so it's it's really up to somebody to crack this because 
Forest Forest is always that thing that like if if somebody can make the list, it could easily become tier one. But first, it's up to the players, and uh, I'm not the player. <laughs> yeah, so. I'm kind of in that boat too. And just for reference too, like I mostly focus building around uh, the silver bolt burn package stuff. Um, so if someone wants to explore fairies, fairies might be or pixies, they might be really really good. I know when I was browsing through Twitter d- during the Uma time frame. Uh, there were pixie lists that were going around a little bit at local level that were winning and doing decently. Obviously, during that time, though, the format was way different than what we're going to be experiencing uh, in Japan. If you weren't playing Uma or Dragon, you were you were playing to just have fun at that point. What it seemed like during that meta, but we're definitely going to be in a much open meta in the English side of the game. All right. Um I guess we'll move on to sword here. Sword is one I am kind of on the fence about. Uh, Part of me is like sword is still always going to be good. It's going to be tier one. It got some okay added cards into it. Um, I know it got uh, Brian, I think is the name of the card. I think it's like an eight drop, right? That's really, really good. And then there was I forget if it's a four or five drop. I think it's a five drop. uh, One of the horses. I, I wish I could remember the name right now. But it also gets storm and, and does damage uh, when it comes into play. It's a very good control tool that when you uh, Evo it as well, you can start swinging in immediately because it has storm. So you can add pressure that way. But outside of that, the package of sword is basically still kind of built around Leo. I don't know if anyone's going to explore outside of that. Um, there was only like a couple really good sword cards. I felt uh, when we were looking at the, the uh, sword list during our review. What do you feel like, Dean? Uh, yeah, I think that I, I personally would put it into tier two because it, it has like a really bad Uma matchup, right? It and is is Uma is Uma just the overlord for this? Um, is, I, is Uma just the best deck? Because like I I want to say that Uma it, it came in hot. It's got slightly overstated followers. Not, I, I mean, I I'm gonna spoil. I think that Uma is gonna go in tier one eventually. Whenever we get to that. But like sword, when you have a bad matchup into like one of the more like popular decks, right? That just came out. That that's bad. Yeah, that, for that's sure. that's really bad, and and that's like kind of my problem. But like it, it could be tier one. You're like sword, sword is always good. Like sword is good. You kind of hit face and you win sometimes. Uh, but I, like if if Uma is like cracking your board and then like you don't answer one of their cards and suddenly they're pushing more damage than you, right? It's that's rough that's real rough yeah absolutely i I think i'm in agreement with you i think the uma matchup for sword is a little bit awkward at times um once again i think it comes down to uh which one of the players is going to stumble in the early game i i feel like a lot of times if you're allowed an uh, like a turn or two to like set up uh and uma can't like overbearingly dominate you that way through their utility uh, then you can have a pretty even game where Sword has the opportunity to win. But there are times where Uma will high roll, uh, like their two drops and stuff, and then the game gets a little out of control if you can't answer it immediately. And that's one thing that Sword has issues with, is we need to trade with followers. And if Uma gets to set up any board, like after like turn four or so, it's very hard to efficiently like remove things on the board um, when playing Sword against Uma. Because if you swing in, they're going to start using using their uh, one drop spells to change the attacks and powers of everything, which makes it very hard for you to efficiently, you know, clear things when they need to be tr- uh, cleared. Uh, but I mean, sword is still very solid. And I, I kind of agree with you. If if we decided to have 1.5 tier, I would probably put sword at 1.5, but I'm definitely leaning more towards tier two on it. All right, um, next we'll have Havencraft. Want to talk about this one, Dean? Oh, Haven. Do you want to put this in tier one? Like, that's that's the real question. Do you think this is a tier one deck? Uh, it's so hard. It's I think Haven, once again, is like caught in the limbo of being the one like tier one point five. I'm a little bit Haven biased because I've been playing so much Haven uh, since set one. I do think it has the tools to be tier one. I don't know if it deserves to be tier one, though. Um, I, I would be okay, like putting this to tier two and like, I, I don't know if I would really fight anyone to put it in tier one. That's, that's how I feel about it. 
Mm. Yeah, I can I can see that. But like my my thing with Haven is when watching Uma, and I could be wrong, I could be wrong, but when watching Uma, it looks like the choke point for Uma is being able to like deal with like its big boards like maybe two plus times in a row. Mm-hmm. And with Haven, we're able to do that. Then we're able to put down the Heavenly Aegis, and they just probably can't answer it. So just, you know, going a little bit heavier on the removal, maybe, like, modifying the Texas list, maybe playing the Coggy and a couple other cards, putting some Themises in, and still having an Aegis at the top end. It's something like that. Seems like it'd be a pretty good deck into Uma, and it really does come down to, will Americans like Uma enough to be playing it? That That is the question. And if people are, and Uma is going to become a huge part of the meta, I think that Haven has a good matchup into it. Also, Haven, like Haven, almost can't lose the sword. Let's be honest. Oh, absolutely. I think Haven has the very good matchup in the sword. Uh, so if we're going to like say uh, sword is like tier one point five or even one, Haven definitely has a good matchup into it. I think like what you just said, uh, Haven ha- can have a good matchup into Uma. The big thing being like being able to clear the board twice is a very good way. Um, like you said, too, I think playing Kaguya and Haven into Uma is very powerful. Uh, some of the things I've noticed from gameplay with Haven is, like you said, if you only get one clear and you don't find the second one, you can lose the game that way. A lot of your games come down to uh, doing the double clear or just stabilizing long enough to be able to get to the Aegis and then you can win games that way. Um, but generally, like, I don't even think Haven got much support with the build I think is going to be popular um, from the Uma release. Also, we're still kind of stuck in the set two stuff for the most part. But I'm also very afraid to be like, yeah, Haven is definitely tier one because I'm not the only matchups I've really seen it be played into is literally Uma and I haven't seen it really played into everything else just yet with all the new Uma support. Um, so I'm I'm not 100% sold on all the matchups just yet, but I, I could see this being tier one, honestly. If we're expecting a very heavy Uma meta, um, I, I think Haven is like kind of like the good, the good, like, how do I say? I think kind of like the, uh, it keep, the, this is the deck that will keep like Uma in check, basically. If that makes sense, right? Yeah, it's like one of the ones. I think yeah, that there, there's a couple I, for sure. Wait, go ahead. Yeah, there's a couple that can like consistently deal with wide boards. Do you want to throw this it. in tier one then, or should we leave this in top of tier two? Top of tier two is fine. I mean, okay. it, it could become tier one. It's a very strong deck, right? I mean, we still mm-hmm. have the Aegis Wing Condition. Uh, the Kaguya deck, it feels so rough to pilot, but it has been getting there. So maybe that core is just good enough. Uh, yeah, I think that, like, I mean, Haven has consistently been, like, really strong just because control decks are strong if you're a good player, right? Yeah. So, And with how it's built, being built right now, you still get to play somewhat of a control game, but you also get a pressure with, like, uh, mid-range, like, good tempo cards, basically, that come down, clear the board, and threaten your opponent so they have to respond. So you're not just sitting there passing turn over and over again, like, with the pure... Uh, control haven list right yeah all right uh rune anything here from you dean they got they got so much they got so much but is rune still booty cheeks (laughs) 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 that's the question uh rune got like literally every good uma card is in rune almost Mm -hmm. basically yeah uh but rune Rune also has alchemical lore, which is a four, like it's a five mana deal four to everything. And you can tutor that, right? So unlike the other things, and you can recycle it with the Agnes. So Rune actually has the best chance of being able to deal with Uma boards that come up. Uh, and, and like maybe like the being able to recycle cards from Grave is just good enough. You have the minus one, minus one. You still got a lot more board control. Your spells are doing a little bit more. Does Agnes work off of only Uma or is it spells? Uh, I believe it's spells. I would have to reread it if you want to look it up really quick again. Or wait, here, I got it right here. Um, So fast. Hold on, I need to open the image bigger. Okay, here it is. Uh, Whenever you play a spell card, choose an enemy follower, give it minus one, minus one. So it's any spell. It It doesn't even say Uma spell. 
Good, good. That card is broken then. Uh, that mm-hmm. is actually a huge boon. It allows... I mean, Rune can just do the same thing as Uma, right? But, like, have more spells. So everything has plus one reach, as long as you have Agnes on board. Are we just going to put everything in two? <laughs> I don't think so. Like, is, I, is, that I, good, is that good enough? Like, you still have D-Shift. You just have, like, more removal. You have the ability to deal with Uma's boards. Which I, I think I think like if you can do that, you're automatically in the running. I, I think I think there's a chance that actually Rune could potentially be a tier one deck. I'm not sold on it just no, 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 yet. Not two. Not not one. I'm thinking like two. Well, I mean, I think there is potential it could sneak into tier one if someone figures out something. Um Rune isn't one I haven't put a lot of work into just yet. Uh, but my feeling all the time is that all like I'm you said, like, all the Uma, all the good Uma cards are actually in Rune or like Abyss, right? Um, it, and so you get that really strong support, even though you're not going to get every good thing that Uma has. But uh, you still have like very good ways to clear the board uh, and deal with like the wide boards of Uma, like, and you can you're good into aggressive matchups. You probably have trouble into like more control oriented matchups. But I also think at the end of the day, D shift. Being a th- win condition is also always really good if you just randomly have it in there. And, yeah. Mm, unless you were thinking of going some other way with Rune. Well, no, no. D ship is like kind of the only way. Like the Darius stuff is like always a joke. But yeah. um, like I want to put this is I want to put uh, Rune into Rogue. Basically, it could either be booty cheeks or someone could figure out the right spice and it I- could. I think it could be bumped up. My, my problem is every time I get hyped to play rune, my hand is like triple of like the shitty spell boost cards that I don't want to draw until I have 50 cards and <laughs> drop. So like, and also like getting uh, Agnes plus Daiwa doesn't help us fuel spell boost. Right. So there's like this problem of like putting more followers in decks. Does that mean we need Daria? What is, what is the glue where rune stops sucking? Like, right. That's the, that's the only problem I have. Mm-hmm. Is at what point do we have the deck and it's consistent? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Because because I, I don't know if have I I've played quite a bit of rune. Like right, I I know that not nearly as much as like the absolute rune stands out there. But whenever I play spell boost, I am literally horrified by the hands that it can produce. So it's. And ultimately, I think the problem is this is a best of one game, right? Best two out of three, like you'd have a hand like that, you go okay, but next hand's gonna be sick, right? But when yeah. it's best two out of three, you go oh no, I lost, and now I'm in uh, I'm in the the X one bracket, and suddenly I can't win the tournament. So that that's the real problem. Yeah, I, I can I can agree with that. Like it, it's very weird. I guess maybe it's not that weird, but to say that rune a lot of runes ability comes down to or consistency comes down to like random draws right so like yes you can get lots of draws going but you're still like slave uh, almost a slave to like what you top deck right yeah sometimes the uh the top like 15 cards are horrendous and then the game is over instantly yeah and uh, i mean obviously any that can happen to any deck but it's it feels I always feel like rune from like I've only played a lot of rune in set one and I kind of dropped it after that because I'm waiting for Kuan to come out um, during when I played those during that time. It, it always felt like I had to like dodge and weave and figure out paths to get to the part of where I win I, the game. I mean, you saw it on like stream like, I, yeah, my deck didn't play Merlin, but like you watch a sorcery cash hit like uh, imagine Daria is a, a Merlin, right? And like a sorcery cash hit like merlin golem like rune blade and suddenly i like don't get my spell boost up and i wasted two mana and nothing happened and i'm mm-hmm. sad and it's raining outside I have to <laughs> here. like right it's like yeah. it, it, it can be rough out there it can be rough out there and playing rune yeah I, i'm kind of okay with putting in a rogue are you cool with rogue or do you think it should go yeah, yeah, actually yeah. be okay uh, rogue or somewhere it's in the middle yeah Who it, knows? yeah all right we have abyss here I, th- I feel like you would have something to say on abyss Ooh, I love Control Abyss. I'm not a big aggro enjoyer in this game, and I don't know. Did aggro Abyss get cards? Not really. Mm. Not really, right? No, not really. I think whenever I looked at like the really hyper-aggressive aggro list, it didn't play m- many Uma car- new, new Uma cards. It's mostly got, set two stuff. 
Yeah, we got another card that says your opponent discards a card, which is insane because that means that between Olivia, that, and Azazel, we can probably rip our, like most of our opponent's hands. Uh, what else did we get? We got the... I'm like holding some Uma cards in front of me real quick. Uh, I forget how to say her name. Rosinski, I think it is. That I think that card is really good. I I know I think you disagree, but I think that card in general is like pretty solid, especially if you're playing more Whoa. of a control list. Well, if you're playing the control list, you can get the necro charge up. Like in, yeah. in like pure Uma, it's a little rougher, right? And then yeah. is it is it that good? I mean, it's more Evo slots. Uh, but I think I, I think like... control this is like really good. You get the uh well, probably not. You probably can't play the kill spell if you're just playing like actual abyss. Some of these cards are bad. Yeah, I, I think like the control abyss we're looking at is like very hand rip. We get like good value that way. Uh, we don't necessarily need to push damage because we're going to combo off of the Zazel and like force the win through that. Yeah, plus yeah. Like, storm damage like it, that, that, mm -hmm. that core at the end. It's just our control pieces in the middle are better. Uh and yeah, like you really don't have to fear removal because if you just keep putting down cards and say your opponent discards a card and then like you hand rip them with a Zazel, ch chances are they're not going to have the answer anymore, right? Because you're going to go, hey, discard a card. And then you're going to put down another card and go, hey, discard a card again. And you put down another Olivia, hey, more hand, gone. And right, if you if you attack your opponent's hand like three times by like turn seven or eight, and then you put down the Azazel, or like I guess till turn 10, right? If you attack their hand like three times by turn 10, and then also hand rip a card, chances are that they, they ain't got much left. Yeah, I, I think um, Control Abyss, like, the only way, or not the only way, but I mean, like, Control Abyss is one of the few decks I feel like can comfortably get to, like, 10 play points most games and, like, keep playing the game in, in like, the current form it has with the new Uma discard stuff. Because, like Dean but, was saying, it, like, you can rip your opponent's hand apart which gives them bad plays and like the only way they could ever fix that is if they get into more draw cards. So if they're playing PTP or something like that, uh, that like kind of is kind of rough for you, but they're taking damage to draw three cards, which you get a once again, rip from their hand again. And like, you just wait till you get to that point where you can use Azel and win. Well, I think the big problem is, is I don't know. Like I'm, I'm like looking at these Uma cards mm -hmm. and nothing fixes the actual problem with control abyss which is dealing with a wide board because that's honestly the real big problem that it has is even two followers it's like a little rough for it yeah uh, especially because like usually it's like you can put down the callway and just say like if your opponent's got like two to three things on board you can put down callway and say this card will get me there this card is going to like magically kill two things uh uma can play the bounce card and bounce it back to your hand uh you instantly lose the game uh soul dealer right it's is that's that's like your form of heal so like you can deal with like one of the two cards but it's the same problem as force i guess the difference is the soul dealer is probably a little more intimidating mm -hmm. to deal with than uh whatever forest was doing lily yeah so uh yeah i i do wonder like you know if like uma just goes like three dudes do you just lose uh that's like I the the real question there but yeah, um, I kind of I kind of agree with everything you said there. Uh, I'm not exactly sure where I want to put this. Where I'm kind of feeling like tier two, bottom tier two or so. Or I put tier two. I mean, because it's like one of those decks. I think it's there's probably something there. And by the way, guys, like tier two and tier one, you can win with tier two. Let's be honest. Yeah. Uh, the, the, like would not be surprised if anything there. If anything, the rogue decks when they top a tournament, we go, oh, what the hell. Uh, but the the tiers twos, we expect them. Yeah, I just to reiterate that too. Like the gap between tier one and tier two, I don't think is like a huge. Well, actually, it's not existing. Yeah, no two. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I don't feel like uh, it's like there's very wide like gap between like the tier one decks and everything else in like this format right now. Maybe I maybe that will change as we develop more into the meta. But uh, at least that's my feeling so far. All right, we got Dragon. So let me just throw this up into probably tier one. I still think this deck so. is really good. I, I I truly do. I think the only difference here is that um, its biggest weakness before in this meta was that very aggressive low to the ground decks could outdo Dragon. 
but Dragon could outdo Uma, but Uma was like the thing that stopped aggro decks from winning as often, which put people off aggro as much during this meta. I still think without like the limit to Shenlong, of course, sucks. So the games you see Shenlong are going to feel really good. The games you don't are going to be a little bit rougher. But I still think the deck can like output lots of damage and push really hard early game and still like get there. That's what I feel like so far, but maybe I'm wrong. What do, what do you think? I have not tested. I'm not going to lie. I have not. Like, right. You guys are grinders. You guys play on untapped. The most horrendous. It UI is the most imaginable. horrendous. Yeah. So, you know, I haven't played with Umi yet. I haven't felt the Shenlong hit yet. On paper, it looks really bad. But also, you know, maybe you don't need Shenlong most games. Maybe like maybe it's just all in my head and it's still tier one. Still got all the broken removal spells. It still has all the disgusting storm followers that quick quick side note. Do you know that every dragon like storm follower is overstatted compared to swords? Every sword follower goes one to one with its mana curve. Like quick blader is one mana for one, novice trooper is three mana for three. Forte is seven for six. Genesis is 10 for nine. Just going to say, yeah, right. You have the best storm followers <laughs> in the game. You have the best spells in the game. Like, you're probably right. This, this deck is probably still as disgusting as it was before. Yeah, and if we believe Uma still to be a really powerful contender, which I'm obviously, spoiler, uh, spoiler alerts, it's still tier, tier one from our testing. The um, dragon at least has very good wide board removal. And they can build threats that also remove the board. So they can force uh, Uma to play play slower. Otherwise, if Uma commits too much, they can just get hit with a con flag and they just kind of lose the game from there. Uh, and then, yeah, like all, all the big followers, like Dean was saying in Dragon, which I think what is what makes it very good still is that everything has storm. Everything hits big. So you can just be like, here, I'm slamming you with my forte. Your turn. They remove your forte. Go back to you. All right, here's my Ogiri cap now. Ogiri cap and be like, yeah, here's another six damage to face or like eight or whatever it can go up to, depending what <laughs> how many carrots you want to feed it. Uh, you still can play the uh, some of the discard package, too, because you still have good ways to discard. So you can still get random burns in and pot shots in, too, which I think is still very powerful. Um, I, I definitely think people need to test and build the deck to like come to their own conclusion on where they think dragon is. But at least I, I think it's still tier one. Yeah. Super solid crap. It's actually just complete bullshit, but that's okay. <laughs> uh. <laughs> it's okay. We have this other bullshit here. I just moved this up to tier Uma, one already. Uma's fine. Yeah. Uma. Look, if you bitch and moan because Uma's good, it ain't getting support. This is it. Every set after this, it just gets a little worse. Yeah, it drastically falls off after this, especially since we've already have the uh, the nerf to Uma because of the restrictions. I don't think Uma is going to survive past this meta. Like people will probably still show up, play it at locals and do well at locals occasionally. Uh, but I think at, once we go into a more open, bigger tournament formats, when they have hopefully next year, it's all open events. I think Uma representation is going to fall very hard. But right now, Uma is very powerful. In, in my head, uh, when set three comes out, the restriction will be lifted. That That's in my head what would happen. That might that might be a thing that does happen. I we're not obviously we we can't we're not like that. That's can't speculation. See the future, but but yeah. that, that's speculation that makes sense to me that that's like little you know heads up that's probably what will, will happen is my guess but you know that's definitely not confirmed uh but yeah so at least we can talk a little bit about what makes you tier one still um have you read the cards this is my first question <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah so. it's just it's a lot of followers uh everything is always able to trade it regardless of board state which is very nice it's like something that not every craft can do like sometimes Sometimes you got a hand, something in your hand is not able to actually just immediately answer with a threat on the board. Every card in Uma can do something on the board, uh, even your worst cards. So there's that part. And then 
yeah, the die was scarlet plus the vodka means that at any point, like a, a guy that you left up becomes a threat, right? That That's the big thing. Just like a lot of tutor, a lot of uh, recursion uh, cards that if you don't deal with kind of hose you like the Agnes being able to go minus one, minus one, making uh, everything have even more reach. And everything is also like rewards you for playing Uma, like, right? The removal spells cost less or they do more damage for playing Uma. And then if you have like a different Uma follower like Agnes on board, suddenly it's not only doing like one extra damage for one mana, but suddenly you have a basically a blazing breath. Right? That's the way it works. The the uh the, what is it? Yeah. It's like if you have a racing follower. Yeah. Yeah, if you have a racing follower, deal three damage. But if you have an Agnes on board, it's like four damage, which means you have a one mana blazing breath as early as like turn three, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, and then another big thing about Uma, so like uh, what makes it really disgusting is once they set up their board and they have, I believe her name's Daiwa Scarlet on the board, yeah. uh, even if they're tapped out, you still have to play around quick spells because it makes per turn one of your spells, one of the spells uh, costs one less and that's on your turn and opponent's turn. So when you're swinging into uh, their board and they have zero play points open, you still have to go, huh, do I lose if they have that spell in hand that normally costs one, but it's zero now? That is very, very rough. Also, if you haven't seen... What's up? It has the name of Lamplet Training of a Witch to Be. <laughs> yeah. But that's okay. And then... I, I just think it's quite a long name. <laughs> and then um, once they get their board going, it starts... Like, every key piece helps the other pieces just be 10 times better. And then once they start casting spells, when they have like the three follower board set up, uh, they're, they go from going wide to also building up taller, basically. So not only do you have to deal with like three plus followers on the board, every turn they stay there, uh, the followers get bigger and bigger until you can no longer deal with them. That's why, you know, having board clear in this meta going against Uma is very, very important. Another thing as well is that you can't play you can't always play a deck that just plays a big thing against uma because they do have lots of very good answers for like uh bouncing things to hand through their uma followers uh you know putting minus one minus one counters on things there have been times where i've had followers on the board with zero attack because they put Asajuma. yeah i've they've they played a spell every turn and my like my three three is now like a zero or three four is like now a zero one on the board and they could just leave it there because it's not going to ever do anything for the rest of the game so i have to forcibly remove the card myself by crashing into other things it's it's pretty annoying and i think for a lot of people who haven't played into uma and if they play against someone who has experience with uma they're gonna hate it a lot in the beginning until they get used to the matchup but yeah i think this kind of wraps up our tier list thoughts i'm interested to, to see what everyone else thinks so i mean comment below let us know if you think we're on the nose or we're totally lost our minds i can't believe the first uma meta like is it cali uh no texas or no Tex Tex texas oh yeah texas yeah te no no texas yeah, yeah it's texas is the first one because california the next Whatever. week is still set two for california yeah. whatever lcq it's gonna be it's going to be four fours, four runes in top eight, and we're going to look <laughs> silly. Okay, we're going to look silly, but <laughs> this is probably pretty close. Very vague. <laughs> That's for sure. Uh, I think that kind of like wraps up everything for us. And do you have any last minute thoughts, Dean, you want to get out there before we say goodbye to everyone? No, thanks everyone who's stuck with it. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, you know, all that jazz. And until next time, hopefully we can get you guys some of these decks. Yep. Uh, that'll be it from us, guys. We're signing off later.